glass soap making. So simple on the outside, so complex on the molecular level. So much chemistry, so many variables. Every batch is inherently different. It all starts with simple liquid oils. Around here, we like to think of that calm bowl of oils as a bunch of lazy pigs on a summer afternoon, comfortably at rest. Then comes the lye. Once added, the oils become molecularly active, generating immense heat in an exothermic reaction that reminds us a bit of what happens when food is added to our formerly peaceful pig herd. Yes. Let's watch that one more time. But back to the soap. Once in the mold, the liquid becomes a solid and all is good, right? Oh no, we're not off that easy. The chemical reaction continues, generating more and more heat. In this video clip, you can see that the soap is nearly twice the temperature of the stone countertop just next to it. At a threshold temperature that varies depending on oil composition and water content, the solid soap begins to revert to a temporary liquid state. But not quite liquid, just semi-liquid. Semi-transparent and only semi-understood, really. This is called gel phase, and it looks something like warm Vaseline. This gel state starts in the center of the soap, where heat is trapped, and it spreads to the edges of the mold. This is what goes on during the 24 or so hours between pouring a soap and unmolding a soap. So what happens if the air surrounding the mold is cold enough to keep the gel state from reaching the edges? The center becomes gelled while the rest of the soap stays solid. This doesn't change the usability or enjoyability of the final soap product, but it does affect the appearance. Let's take a look. Remember Charlie's Chocolate Chunk Bars? They were made in December, in the cold of winter. The living room never exceeded 60 degrees Fahrenheit and was often even much colder. While the inside of Charlie's Chocolate Chunk reached gel phase, the cold of the room prevented the edges of the soap from getting warm enough to ever re-semi-liquefy. The result is a ring of darker soap right in the center of each bar. The gelled oval surrounded by ungelled but equally wonderful soap. Remember, the detectable differences between gelled and ungelled soap are just cosmetic. Charlie's chocolate chunk bars are powdered with a dusting of brown mica, which largely disguises the evidence of partial gel. This coating will wash off with use, leaving you with the full view of chemistry in action. If your bar has a large gelled oval, you know it's from the center of the batch. If your oval is very small, you have a bar from the end of the loaf, where the temperature never got quite as high. When you use your bar of Charlie's Chocolate Chunk, be sure to take a moment to appreciate the chemical story hidden inside. Thanks so much for watching this first episode of The Science of Suds, a new series dedicated to sharing bite-sized bits about the chemistry of soap. For a full video on the making of Charlie's Chocolate Chunk Bars, check out the link in the upper right corner of your screen. For rescue animal meet and greets and more footage from the farm, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.